What's up everybody? Welcome back to this video series. In this video, we're going to add on file sharing services to the network that we built. And we're going to talk a little bit about the purpose of a network. I, I love the how, but I'm even bigger in understanding why. So I think you should always, when it comes to technology, you should know why and how. So we've done a lot of how and walkthroughs. Now let's talk about the why behind this network here and networking in general. If you think about it, a networking by definition is an interconnection of computers. But why? Why do we have networks? Why is it something that we use regularly? Well, my, in my experience, the, the big three for networking have been sharing, collaboration, and communication. So those are the three main reasons we would use a network. And the network is really the transportation lifeblood for our information to travel across. It's kind of like a highway. So if you imagine going into a city, you have to jump on a highway typically to get there. A network is the same way, but for our traffic and for our information that travels. So when we're talking about adding sharing to a network, we have to understand what it is that we're sharing. Um, and, and in this case, we're going to be sharing a folder on this Windows computer, which we are calling a server, even though it is Windows 10. And our Mac is going to be able to access that Windows file server over the network. And I have VNC set up, just like we did in a prior video, so that I can remotely access this Mac um, so I don't have to be uh, rolling between both of these computers. I can just have control over this computer from this one single workstation. Because this workstation right here is where I'm doing all my content creation from. So let's begin. You'll see here I've got a VNC connection open with the Mac. And I've already got ready to go connecting to the server. So again, what I want you to understand is that this Mac is considered the client and this Windows 10 system is considered the server. So I'm on my Windows 10 system now recording this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create the share and, and a shared folder is used in many different ways based on really what the needs of the business are. So in this case, I teach at a community college and in many different forms I capture my content, I capture my presentations and my walkthroughs and I need a place to put them where I can view them. So over time what I would like to do on my own home network is host a content creation and a, really a media server where I can upload music, pictures and videos to enjoy on my own network, kind of like your own custom Netflix. That'll be a capstone project at the end of this course, and that is to build your own Plex media server. So we'll, we'll talk about that towards the end of the course, but for now, I'm kind of laying the framework for how I'm going to do this. So to see how you would create a share in Windows, you just right-click, go to New Folder, also known as a directory, and I'm going to call this Content. I just named it content, but that's not enough. I have to right click it again, go down to properties, and go to sharing tab. In this sharing tab, notice it's not shared. So we're going to share it. And I'm always a big fan of using advanced sharing options. I'm going to check to share this folder, leave the share name content, and then I'm going to go into permissions. This is a big deal in IT, is permissions on shared resources. This is how we control access to this. You can imagine that this is the bouncer outside of a, a building or outside of the club or a security guard that's checking his or her list to see if you're on the list or not. Now notice by default in Windows, the everyone group is given read permissions. What we need to do is we need to narrow this down to only the individuals that need access. So if this was a business environment, I would add the group or the department, like, I don't know, HR, marketing, uh, content creators, if you will. In this case, I'm just going to add my individual user that I'm logged into on this computer. So I'm going to remove everyone because that's not secure. And then I'm going to add just myself. I always check name. 
Notice the location is searching on my local computer in the user database that Windows hosts. It's called the SAM database. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, when it underlines it, it just confirms that that is in fact an object in that SAM database. I'm gonna go ahead and add, and we will talk about better ways to host users and groups, but that'll be later on in the course. So here we have me, just read access. I'm gonna allow full control. So if you're doing this, you may wanna take note of who you're logged in as. You can go up to uh, the start menu and you can click right here on your user. It'll tell you the name of your user that you're logged in as, see? So I'm giving myself full control. So I'm gonna hit apply, okay apply okay we're not quite done yet I'll tell you why because there's another level of permissions now I want you to know that this is share permissions meaning that's the link over the network that people can see and get access to this security tab is what's called NTFS permissions NTFS is the new technology file system in Windows um, it's default in every Windows operating system and it means basically once someone is able to access the share what can they do once they're on the share meaning what can they do once they're inside this folder on that computer over the network uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into advanced sharing or advanced NTFS permissions I'm gonna disable inheritance because by default these permissions are being inherited from top level folders meaning the folder above and the folder above that one and the folder above that one all the way up to the C drive know that the C drive is the root of the Windows file system so we're gonna disable these inheritance remove them all because we want to be our own independent uh, folder here go ahead and add select a principal and guess what I'm gonna add my user again you'll add your user if you're following along as I do this we hit OK full control and it, if I ever lose you at any point feel free to pause the video catch up and and then um, start it up again that's the beauty of video so hit OK apply it's applied them notice these checks went from gray checks to solid black checks what that means is this is a root level folder. That's what that black check means and that these are original permissions that have not been inherited. Um, I will do a, an entire, I will do an entire series on file sharing and permissions later on in this course. However, for now, just consider this a crash course in file sharing and permissions just for the sake of understanding how this works on a network. So we officially have shared this folder added the proper permissions now we can try to go ahead and log into this share access this share from our our Mac OS which as we can look back at the topology would be this device right here so I'm gonna open up VNC notice it timed out on me I'll log back in and I'm going to show you how to get here. So from a Mac OS system to access a Windows file share, which could be common in an environment where people bring their own devices or you have a creative department where they like to use Macs over Windows, but you're, you may have a file sharing system that's based on Windows, you're going to need to know how to access that file share and, and that it's possible. So how you do this in Mac OS is once you're logged in, you go up to Go and you go to connect to server. Notice what pops up by default, and I wanna break this down a little bit. SMB, SMB, you may have heard of this, is server message block. Server message block is a file sharing protocol used in Windows to share files over a network. This is a common, commonly attacked protocol and often has vulnerabilities like any other protocol. And by the way, a protocol is a rule that governs communication over a network. So as you grow in your understanding of networking and you want to aim towards whatever IT direction, whether it's ethical hacking or just administration, you need to know that uh, what protocol is doing what. Um, so 
Notice the syntax in Mac OS. So it, you have to pick the protocol, colon, forward slash, forward slash, the IP address or the name of that share. So we know if we looked at the topology, and this is why documentation is good, the IP address of the file server should be 192.168.0.11. So on Mac, I'm gonna, instead of this address that's already in there, I'm gonna do 0 0.11. And then I'm gonna try to connect to that share. So connecting to this share, one of the things that should happen is that it should ask me for permission. So I'm gonna hit connect. Notice how it asked me per for permission and it defaulted to my username that I'm logged into on Mac. But we don't do that. We use the username that is on that Windows system. So when you're trying to access resources on a device on the network, typically there's a user database somewhere that's authenticating access into the system. So in this case, we're accessing the local user database on that Windows computer. We're not using Active Directory right now. And I will type in my password here. I'm gonna connect. If my password was right, it should allow us in. Notice here, wasn't our folder name content? Sure was, hit okay. And I'm in that folder now. So I should be able to create folders. So I'm gonna just show you, because what good is accessing a share if, um, if you can't do anything in it? So I'm gonna show you, I'll pop this in on the left and open File Explorer up on the right so we can watch it happen live. And you'll notice here, I'm gonna open up content on my Windows system and I'm gonna create a folder in here because if I can't create a folder in here, I don't have permission, so I'll create folder. Notice how I created untitled there. I'll say first entry just as a test. Click off, and there we go. We have set up a file server on the network for Mac users and Windows users to access to save all their files. Now, the goal with having a file server is hosting your files centrally. And I do understand some of you may be thinking, hey, don't, isn't cloud the way to go now? Sometimes, you know, you have big organizations, they like to keep their data stored locally, whether it may be because it's uh, uh, intellectual property they wanna keep secret or just because that's what they're used to. I will agree that for the most part, cloud storage is becoming a bigger and bigger topic and a bigger and bigger technology in this space but I will say that this is something you need to know. Now, whether you're an ethical hacker, whether you're in networking, you have to understand how file sharing works. Uh, and, and this is a ba at the basic level how it works. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Shoot a comment in the Discord. Um, feel free to message me on LinkedIn. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.